by Angela Dobbs Gordon. Good morning, Angela. Good morning. This is another uh, very poignant and very important story. Uh, Angela has driven down specially from Enniscorthy to be here this morning. We are honoured and delighted that you're with us, Angela. Thank you. Angela is 38 years of age from Enniscorthy, uh, from the town or outside? From the town. From the town. Only after getting a HSC hospital appointment letter from University Hospital Waterford last week or the week before, was it? Last Monday. Last Monday. This was 10 months after you decided to pay for private treatment for breast cancer. Tell me what happened. Well, it was in April of last year and um, I was after being away for a couple of days with a friend and I came back from holidays and I discovered a lump on the Sunday, it was the 27th of April. And I rang the local care doc and um, they told me to get to my GP the following morning first thing. And I done that and my GP then sent a referral to Waterford. Um, and that was on the Monday and I heard nothing from them. So I rang on the Wednesday to see what's the story with the appointments in Waterford. And the lady on the phone said that I could be waiting any time I couldn't she couldn't give me a date or a time or anything she said I might be the 23rd of May but I'm, I couldn't guarantee and how did you feel when you heard that uh, shocked um, upset uh, didn't know what to do at that stage um, after coming off the phone so it wasn't until the Friday when it was really hitting me because I hadn't slept up from the Wednesday till the Friday like I was sleepless nights worrying and on the Friday then, I just Googled breast cancer, which I'd never do. I'd never Google things like that. And a mobile number came up and I didn't actually even go into the link. I just took the mobile number down and rang it there and then on the Friday at three o'clock. There must have been such panic going through your mind. There was, because I was worrying for my three kids. Do you know, they needed their mammy. Three children, how old? Uh, 19. Uh, 15 and she's 12 now the baby what's their names uh, abigail mitch and madison lovely and had you told them at this stage i had i don't i didn't keep any secrets from the children i think they need to know everything that's going on and did you ring the mobile or what happened next i rang the mobile and a lovely lady answered the phone and um she um said to me i was crying and she was very 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 nice on the phone and she said if i could get the doctor's referral letter sent straight away that she'd get back straight away to me so i rang my gps and seemingly the fax machines were down or something so my sister worked five minutes away from the surgery and went over and received the letter and he, uh, faxed it straight away so you ended up having private treatment tell us what happened yeah um we went um up the next that was the friday on the saturday morning i was to be up in the hermitage at nine o'clock in the morning and it cost me 100 euro to see the doctor and he was able to say that i was in trouble by the size of the lump and everything else now he couldn't tell me what type or anything else until i had um more investigations so he had um, said that i was to be up on the thursday for a mammogram and an ultrasound, which would have cost me um, 350. So we went home, I felt a bit more, yes, I knew that I was in trouble, but I felt a bit more I'm getting something done and I'm getting somewhere instead of just being leaving it and not knowing. And um, we um, got a phone call on the bank holiday Monday, which I was supposed to be up on the Thursday, but they brought forward and brought me up on the Tuesday. So literally from the Friday to the Tuesday, it was really quick. Surgery? I ended up having to go, they transferred me back to James's and I ended up having biopsies done. And then from that, I started chemo within the, within the month. I started chemo and then I had an operation and then I had um, radiation, which I've only finished about two weeks now. You look very well. <laughs> Thanks. And people will be able to see on Facebook later. And thank you for doing the yeah. Facebook video for no us. No problem. Um, had you private health insurance? No. So how did that work? Who, who, who paid for it? I paid. Um, it was either 
sit back and not do anything or try and borrow money from the credit union anywhere because I was buying a house at the time so all my money was tied up and it was either sort yourself and be there for the kids and live life or wait back and worry like how what's much, going to happen. How much did it cost? It cost me 450 in all. 4,000? No, 450 450 euro. for everything? That was just for the consultation, the uh, ultrasound and the mammogram and to start me off in the system. Okay. And was there any extra cost then coming into the system or? Other than, no, not coming into the system. Other than that, I would have had uh, two or three more uh, appointments just with the doctor, which would have been a hundred euro. So in all, I only paid 750 out, which I didn't mind once because I knew I was being well looked after then. How do you feel that you had to pay money? Well, I found it was very hard. Um, it's hard when you have kids and when you have everyday life things going on. Do you know, it's not an easy thing to try and find money for anyone. Do you know, the only thing that kept me going was thinking for the kids. Like you'd find money to do things for them or you'd find money for Christmas or things like that. So I kept saying, well, if we don't have money for Christmas, so what? They'll have me. Do you know, so. And you just got the money from friends or? My sister was very good. Her page. Well, yeah. What's her name? Kelly. Kelly. Well done, yeah. Kelly. Um, and then, had there been any contact with anybody at University Hospital Waterford at all? No, other than a, a letter did come once I had initially started about something about the 23rd of May. And um, I was already halfway through chemo at that stage. And then I received the letter last Monday to state that they hadn't got an appointment for me anyway. Did I need, still need um, to see them? Did I still need an appointment there? Whereas I'm finished treatment. And, and Waterford you, hasn't even seen me like. How do you feel about that? Shocked. Shocked for everyone in, in the South East. Big time shocked. Why? I've seen a lot of other people when I was attending James's from Donegal, from Cavan, from every other part of the country. And none of them were waiting the length or had to do what I had to do. Do you know? So, and I've had a lot of people contact me over the Facebook page and over me putting up the letter who are in a si similar situation as me, who are waiting seven and eight months and are asking me exactly how did I go about it and they were afraid that they won't get back onto public. There's a big fear out there that once you go private you can't go back public. A big, big fear out there of that. And is that correct, that fear? Well, it wasn't for me. I got put back onto public, no problem. Do you know, you have to do what you have to do at the time to try and get seen. And how do you feel about the, the health system, that dislocation between private and public? It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Like it's terrible for young women to be, you're told to act fast when you find a lump, or when you find something. You act fast, well, why aren't the hospitals acting fast? Why aren't they initially getting the people in and even just getting it checked Yes, half, maybe half of the people that are gone are just cis or whatever, but what about the other half that are not? Now the HSE said regarding University Hospital Waterford, in relation to breast cancer, over 95% of urgent referrals to the hospital are seen within two weeks as per the National Cancer Control Programme performance target. UHW is currently undertaking a validation process of referrals in the breast care service. I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. This was initiated as a result of high DNA do not attend rate for clinical appointments. The hospital doesn't comment on individual patient cases. However, we'd like to apologise for any distress or upset caused on this occasion. What do you think of that? It's shocking. It's shocking, like, because I was only 37, like, when I found out that I was in a desperate place because they say mammograms and all aren't done until you're over 50. Well, I'm 15, 17 years away from that time. You're still a young woman. You know, like it's young not good enough. Three, absolutely, yeah. How did the treatment affect you? Um, it was tough. I lost all my hair, my eyelashes, my eyebrows, the whole lot. I was very sick, um, tired. Um, I travelled up and down to Dublin constantly for the chemo, which I had four lots every two weeks of an AC, and then I was weekly for twelve weeks. So 
Oh, it was hard going, it was hard going on the family because the kids had to be minded and then I had to have a driver drive me up as well. But um, I got through it. And I'm happy that everyone was there to help, everyone rallied round. So. Your sister probably said it's the best few bob she's ever spent. Yeah, she surely is. And she was so excited to see us at the other end. It's been a tough, tough year. And how are you now? What's the... No, I'm what are good. the doctors saying now? Um, no, I'm good. I'm in remission. I'm I'm still getting other checks done and I'm still attending Dublin because I still have to get more treatment every three weeks for a year. Um, but no, the it, because I got it so quick, like I was supposed to have a mastectomy, but I ended up only getting a lumpectomy because I acted quick and I had 20 lymph nodes removed, which it was traveling, it was spreading. So it was just the quick the quick response that I had done and move quick on it. And the fact that the HSE says that 95% of urgent referrals are seen within two weeks, you hadn't even got to that stage of being classified as an urgent referral. No, hadn't even within, even with ringing them, I hadn't even been made urgent or anything else. Why do you think that is? Was there, were you given a reason for it? No. And not given out about the lady on the other side I suppose she has so many people ringing but I just found that she wasn't very compassionate like when I had rang Dublin and did you get back to UHW now since since you got the letter last week no I haven't been back to them yet because I have to send that letter back to say that I don't want any treatment that I have had treatment elsewhere and what message would you have for women that are out there now that are in the similar situation? I tell them to act fast and to ring, keep ringing if you can't, or like if you can't get your hands on money, try a different hospital, try whatever you can because it's your life and you have to take it in your hands to get someone to listen. It's just to get into the system. Because once you're in the system, the care- The care is fantastic. fantastic you cannot yes. give out, you could not give out about any of the nurses, the doctors, or anything else it's just the initial getting checked and making sure do you know that, that you're in on that system because if you hadn't done something about it you mightn't be here talking to us today because no, mine was uh, mine was um aggressive and it was working it was going through very quick like so it was what are you thinking about the future having a happy life <laughs> <laughs> can't wait for my next holidays i've been I haven't been able to go on holidays since that, the week before um, I found the lump and I'm just looking so forward to having a break now with the kids. It's been a tough year. Have you anything booked? Oh, we have. We're going to Fort Ventura now in June. Lovely. Yeah, there's a, about 27 of us going, so we should have a great time. <laughs> <laughs> so watch out and escort the on tour in Fort Ventura. You, yeah, we'll be taking over the island. <laughs> <laughs> Angela, it's a pleasure meeting you. And uh, I know from the texts and comments that we'll read out in a few minutes, people are um, affected by your story and they can relate to your story. And we'll, we'll read out those in a few minutes. Uh, thank you so much for coming thank down. Thank you so much for having me. I just want the awareness out there for everyone else. Absolutely. And I know that's why you've come and done yeah. that. And fair play to you. And obviously yeah. the connection with the hospital here. Um, and I know, as you say, once you get into the system, the treatment can be very good, yeah. whether it's local or whether it's in some place in Dublin or anywhere else. So. Yeah. Um, we will talk to um, talk to people about their comments just after the short break and uh, safe travelling home to you. Thank you. Thanks so much.